to be read at dusk. One, two, three, four, five. There were five of them, five couriers, sitting on a bench outside the convent on the summit of the Great St. Bernard in Switzerland, looking at the remote heights stained by the setting sun, as if a mighty quantity of red wine had been broached upon the mountain top and had not yet had time to sink into the snow. This is not my simile. It was made for the occasion by the stoutest courier, who was a German. None of the others took any more notice of it than they took of me, sitting on another bench on the other side of the convent door, smoking my cigar like them, and also like them, looking at the reddened snow and at the lonely shed hard by, where the bodies of belated travellers dug out of it, slowly wither away, knowing no corruption in that cold region. The wine upon the mountain top soaked in as we looked. The mountain became white, the sky a very dark blue, the wind rose, the air turned piercing cold, the five couriers buttoned their rough coats. There being no safer man to imitate in all such proceedings than a courier, I buttoned mine. The mountain in the sunset had stopped the five couriers in a conversation. It is a sublime sight, likely to stop conversation. The mountain being now out of the sunset, they resumed. Not that I had heard any part of their previous discourse, for indeed I had not then broken away from the American gentleman in the traveller's parlour of the convent, who, sitting with his face to the fire, had undertaken to realise to me the whole progress of events which had led to the accumulation by the Honourable Ananias Dodger of one of the largest acquisitions of dollars ever made in one country. "'My God!' said the Swiss courier, speaking in French, which I do not hold, as some authors appear to do, and to be such an all-sufficient excuse for a naughty word that I have only to write it in that language to make it innocent. If you are talking of ghosts... But I don't talk of ghosts, said the German. Of what, then? asked the Swiss. If I knew what, then, said the German, I should probably know a great deal more. It was a good answer, I thought, and it made me curious. So I moved my position to that corner of my bench which was nearest to them, and leaning my back against the convent wall, heard perfectly without appearing to attend. Thunder and lightning, said the German, warming. When a certain man is coming to see you unexpectedly, and without his own knowledge sends some invisible messenger to put the idea of him into your head all day, what do you call that? When you walk along a crowded street at Frankfurt, Milan, London, Paris, and think that a passing stranger is like your friend Heinrich, and then another passing stranger is like your friend Heinrich, and so begin to have a strange foreknowledge that presently you will meet your friend Heinrich, which you do, so you believed him at uh, Trieste. What do you call that? It is not uncommon either, murmured the Swiss and the other three. Uncommon, said the German. It's as common as cherries in the Black Forest. It's as common as macaroni at Naples. Oh, and Naples reminds me, when the old Marchesa Cenzanima shrieks at a card party on the Kaya, as I heard and saw her, for it happened in a Bavarian family of mine, and I was overlooking the service that evening, I say when the old Marchesa starts up at the card table, white through her rouge, and cries, My sister in Spain is dead. I felt her cold touch on my back. And when that sister is dead at the moment, 